Welcome in, everybody. We made it to Friday. The sun is kind of out. It's peaking, <laughs> and there's just a great energy today, and we hope that you're having a great day so far. I'm Larissa Wall, and of course, you're watching Local on 2. And I'm Laura Schweizer, and we are so happy that you're joining us, TGIF. We're going to keep that energy going all hour long, starting with our first guest. Yes, we are so excited. He's a self-taught musician known for his amazing guitar skills, rock sound, and blues hits, and he's going to be performing performing at the Ryman again, coming up soon next month. So we are so happy to have him here. Yes, please welcome Grammy nominated Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Hi. So happy that you <laughs> yes. are here. Right Kenny, here. okay, so your show is in February. You've got a new album and I love that this is going beyond the traditional blues. So tell right. us about, um, uh, excuse me, Dirty, uh, Dirt on My Diamonds, Volume, Volume One. Yeah, it's a wordy title, I know. <laughs> but there's a message in there, yeah. right? So Dirt on My Diamonds, Volume One. Um, you know, what we did is we took what historically what I've done for the past 30 years is b take blues as the foundation of the music, you know? And then I grew up around a radio station. My dad was on the radio when I was a kid. So I listened to all kinds of music. So we pull different influences from different genres. So you'll hear some country influence. You'll hear certainly some rock influence. Even like a little hip hop stuff here and there, because you know my generation was the gen hip hop generation, <laughs> and you know we just kind of throw it all in there. I'm from Louisiana, so we throw it all in the pot and got like a big gumbo and see what comes out the other side. And, it, and it's usually a really exciting, like fresh take on what people might call contemporary blues. Ooh, I like yeah. it. Okay, before we talk any further, and we're going to talk more after, but let's take a quick listen. I wish that you could see yourself. I, I loved you already, but the cat in there, I love you even more. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. How have your personal situations in the last few years kind of added and, you know, shaped this new record? Well, I mean, all the songs that I write are come from personal experience. You know, whether it's my own or the people that I'm writing the songs with or something we observe someone else going through, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, typically, I mean, blues music gets a, a reputation for being like this downer kind of genre, but it's really not. It's about celebrating life. So I've really taken it upon myself to like really write and record music that even if we're dealing with a difficult subject, that it, it has a positive message. And that song, You Can't Love Me If You Don't Love You, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a serious life lesson. You know, you got to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Um, but the way it's recorded is kind of still feels like an uplifting song. Yeah. yeah. I, like know, I was I in Hawaii that. on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> swaying back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Um, now, in less than a month, you're going to be back at the Ryman. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. What yeah. can people expect at the show? Well, it's going to be an electric show. I mean, you know, we're we, we pride ourselves on our reputation for putting on great concerts. We make albums so we can play concerts for people. And that's what's kept us going for 30 years, right? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, so basically we're going to be featuring some songs from the new record, but I have a huge catalog of music, and we've had a lot of radio success over the years, so there's a lot of great songs that people have listened to for a long time that we have to choose from. So we're going to go all the way back to the first album, Led Better Heights, and play a little bit of everything all the way in between up to the current album. And so, you know, but the, at the end of the day, it's guitar centric music, it's blues, it's rock, it's Americana, it's, you know, it's just straight up American music. And we, we've never seen a dissatisfied customer at the, at the show. So <laughs> we promise if you come see us, you'll have a great time. Yeah, I, I bet. Now, we were talking earlier um, about the fact that you recorded this down in Muscle Shoals. Mm -hmm. How, did, did the location influence the music at all for well, you? Well, we went down there because of its history, right? Like, there's so many great bands and legendary albums that have been recorded in Muscle Shoals. And we wanted to soak up some of that vibe. And we knew that just by being in the room, we went to Fame Studios, which is like walking back in time. It looks exactly the same as when all those legendary albums were made. We knew that that would find its way into the music that we w wrote and recorded, and it certainly did on this record, so it was a lot of fun. Speaking of going back in time, you've been doing this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. What about Nashville? I mean, you've yeah. seen and witnessed all of the changes here. How has it uh, kind of stayed the same, though? Well, what's interesting is that it's become more open to an artist like me, because when I first started coming here, it was all about if you were a musician, you either had to be country music or it's like nobody really cared, except the songwriters. The songwriters loved it when it, uh, an artist outside of country music would come to town. 
because they were anxious to write anything besides country <laughs> music because that's what they did all day every day so i always had a great time writing songs with people from nashville but i never got a lot of acceptance as a you know a musician because i was kind of an outsider i didn't do country music but this has become the music city of the entire country it's the epicenter for the music industry now it really holds that title and you know i moved here a few years ago but i didn't really come here for the music because my career is already in place but what i came here for is because i believe it's a great place to raise a family mm -hmm. and, and i have six children and we're very happy to be here and the music industry is a great byproduct for a guy like me but you know i, I want to raise my family here and we we think that was the right decision oh mm -hmm. yeah it's an amazing place to live that's for yeah. sure um quick question for you before before you go about the, your show, the, the Ryman, the 24th of February, what is it like playing up there? I mean, it's such an iconic stage. Yeah, it's so many, I mean, anybody who's, anyone has played at the Ryman, the history is in that building. That's another one of those places, like, you kind of walk back into time, yeah. you know, they still have, like, the pews, you know, the benches that people sit in, instead of traditional theater seating. And so, you can see the photographs, and there was people that were watching legendary performers going back decades and decades on that same stage, sitting in those same seats, and the list is so long, it's just unbelievable. So to be up there, I mean, they call it, you know, it's like going to church, you know, yeah. it's like one of those places. And uh, it's an honor. I mean, everybody who walks up on that stage and plays that stage, they realize the significance of that building. Mm -hmm. So, so true. So neat. I can't, I just, I heard you say that you, uh, create a record and go on tour every single every two years. You yeah. release a record, you go on tour. How the heck do you do that with six kids, six kids yes. for thirty years? Well, frankly, now that the industry, you know, things have changed a lot yes. over the years, right? And now it's becoming more. A typical album cycle was two years. You know, you put a record out, you go tour for two years, and you had another record to come out, start another tour. But it's actually getting shorter and shorter where we're going to put out probably two albums. This Well, oh, wow. Dirt On My Diamonds Volume 1 came out in November, so it's been out a couple months. But we have Volume 2 that's probably going to come out before the end of this year. So it'll be less than 12 months. Wow. And we'll have another record coming out because... With the internet and streaming and all that stuff, it's more like having a constant flow of uh, content to engage your fan yeah, base true. with. It's a different it's world constant. today. Constant, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad there's a volume two coming out. Yeah. I was wondering. Okay, well, thank you so much for being <laughs> yeah. here today. Make sure to check out Kenny Wayne Shepherd at the Ryman, Saturday, February 24th. And, of course, his new album, Dirt on My Diamonds, volume one, volume one, rather. And you can find it all in one spot, KennyWayneShepherd.net. Now what?